come to worship this morning on October the 1st. You can almost feel a little bit of coolness in the air, can't you? You can almost feel that things are starting to change. A couple of quick announcements. Um, on last Sunday, two of our confirmation students completed all of their requirements for confirmation and they'll be confirmed um, in a couple of weeks. And today, we start back with three additional students. So our confirmation class goes, it's a two-year program. And so those students who began last year will complete their second year this year, and then we rotate through them. So today, the sixth and seventh graders, those students are in the sixth grade and seventh grade have confirmation. So if you're going into the sixth grade, and I didn't send you a note, parents, or if you have grandparents that are going into the sixth grade, you're, you can come too, because you know, this, this past year we had four students and five adults. So you won't be out of place, right? You won't be out of place in there, and you get to form this special relationship with students that you maybe, unless you're a youth advisor, you don't get that benefit. I think of Susan Busby, she was the first one who went through it, Susan, with all those boys. It was me and Susan and all the boys. So um, if you would like to come to confirmation class, you are welcome. You do not have to pass a test and you might learn something new. But you're welcome to come to that. So two doors down from my office in the education building um, from 3 to 5. And then youth begins at 5 o'clock. So I'll take your kids from three to five, and then the uh, youth will take your kids from five to seven, and you know what you get? Four hours of peace in your house. <laughs> Next week is homecoming. So you want to um, be here and you want to stay for the covered dish. So our theme is home is where you hang your hat. So you're welcome to wear a hat. Do you remember going to church and all the women wore hats? I wish I had one of my mama's big old hats. But anyway, we, um, bring your hat. You can wear a hat if you want to. So worship is at 9, and the covered dish will be at 1130. I goofed in the announcements. We don't have one body this week. It's actually next week, and the date's, change, uh, the date's different, too. So one body, not this week, but next week. A couple other announcements I want to tell you about is... Outside the office is a brochure about Easter season Holy Land pilgrimage. I know that some of you have already signed up for this. One of my professors, actually he was a TA for my Hebrew class, Bobby Morris, who was act, is actually um, went back through and is ordained. He's, he serves a parish up in Prosperity. I think that's right. Prosperity. I think it's Mount Pilgrim. In prosperity, do y'all know that church? I think that's where he is. Um, but anyway, he will be leading us on a trip through the Holy Land. It's for two weeks. We leave April the 1st through the 13th. And there's some more of these brochures out there. The reason I lift that up is today is one of the deadlines, if you would like to sign up for that. I also want to read for you something that's in my office all the time. It says, isn't life more interesting when things aren't just routine? Mount Hermon is anything but boring. We have great vision with many opportunities available to us. Realizing that there will always be challenges, the key is how we respond. We are looking for a pastor who can help us reach new heights by emphasizing pastoral care, spiritual growth, young children's ministry, creating new leaders, community outreach, and partnering with us together. Let's celebrate Christ together. That's the first thing I ever knew about you. It was on the call committee package that the bishop's office gave me as I interviewed with your call committee. And today marks the fifth year anniversary of me being here. Yep. Yeah. 
We still have lots more to do, amen? But we're well on our way as we continue to serve God in this place. If you are on my call committee, I ask that you'll stand. And Brittany, and Joel, Joel's standing. He's actually not, sir, he's not actually selling programs. <laughs> yeah. And Brittany Allen was the other. So thank you all for seeing God's work that was blowing through me and inviting me to be a part of this community. Thank you. And today, Svetlana took a day off, a well-deserved day off. And Ryan's leading us in worship. And Ryan has a, um, an announcement, and then he will prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning. Um, so in two weeks, we're going to do another Jesus in Java. Um, it's uh, October the 14th at 6 p.m., and we're going to have a friend of mine um, who I'm proud to call a friend, uh, Randy Stonehill. Um, come. Um, Randy's a member of the Contemporary Christian Music Hall of Fame. Um, he was around when the Jesus Revolution started. He was a kid and he started playing back out back then out in California and made his way across the states and all around. Um, and we're very fortunate to have him. He plays all over the world and um, I'm just thrilled he's coming here. Um, a few years back he married a friend of ours, Leslie, and um, so we got to know him a little better, but it's, uh, he was one of my musical heroes when I was younger, his playing style on guitar and uh, how he has just an authentic heart for Christ is, um, and getting to know him and, and he is the person who is music where I know where it comes from. So just to let you know the type of person he is, because I know a lot of y'all never heard of him before. And uh, anyway, if you get a chance, come out that night, 6 p.m., October the 14th, and I'm sure your heart will be blessed. I've been waiting for the sun To come blazing up out of the night Like a ball from a cannon Till every shadow is scattered Every dragon's on the run Oh, I believe, I believe The light is gonna come And this is the dark This is the dark before the dawn I've been waiting for some peace To come raining down out of the heavens On these war-torn fields All creation is aching for the children of God to be revealed Oh, I believe, I believe that the victory is sealed The serpent struck, but it was crushed beneath his heel Oh, I know the wind can bring the lightning And oh, I know the lightning brings the rain And I know the storm can be so frightening But that same wind is gonna blow that storm away Gonna blow that storm away I'm waiting for the king To come galloping out of the clouds While the angel armies sing He's gonna gather his people In the shadow of his wings And I'm gonna raise my voice With the song of the redeemed Cause all this darkness Is a small and passing thing This is the storm, this is the storm the storm before the calm, this is the pain, the pain before the bomb. This is the cold, the cold, it's the cold before the warm. These are the tears, the tears before the song. This is the dark. 
Sometimes all I see is this darkness Well now can't you feel the darkness This is the dark before the dawn of dawn I could see the fields of glory I could hear the sower's song I had a dream that I was waking at the burning edge of dawn and all that rain had washed me clean and all the sorrow was gone I had a dream that I was waking at the burning edge of dawn and I could finally believe the king had loved me all along I had a dream that I was waking at the burning edge of dawn, I could see the sore in the silver mist. And he was calling me home. I invite you to stand and face the baptismal font. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the Spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. And in that completeness, we turn around and face the doors of the sanctuary where we come in as broken children. We ask for God's forgiveness. So let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. For the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that our unity may one day be restored, and that we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, still do. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. together. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is the only person who sins that shall die. Yet you say the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live, they shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. Word of God, word of life. We will read Psalm 25 responsively. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Let 
Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. A reading from Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching, and they said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? And Jesus answered them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? 
And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then do you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd for all regard John as a prophet. So after this, they answered Jesus, we do not know. Y'all can giggle. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority am I doing these things. What do you think? A man, he had two sons, and he went to the first, and he said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And the son answered, I will not. But later the son changed his mind, and he went. The father went to the second, and he said the same, and the son said, I go, sir. But the son did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? And they said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going to enter the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated and I invite the students to come up. Come on up. How are you? Good. How are you, Ara? You're good today? Come on up. It's all right. She'll be there when you get back. I have a question. Have you ever changed your mind? Have you changed your mind? What? I, I'm, this might be a loaded question, but what have you ever changed your mind about? What kind of milkshake you wanted? What have you have you changed your mind before? Have you changed your mind? Have you made a decision and then changed your mind later? Yeah. You probably have too. You made you, you didn't want to really come up here and then you thought, hmm, there might be candy involved. <laughs> Sometimes they say this thing about women that we reserve the right to change our mind. But actually, everybody has a right to change their mind, right? Sometimes we say it's a gut instinct. Sometimes we say that. We, we think of something and we answer, and then we change our mind and say, not do it. Just like Adrian was about to stick his finger in that water, and he looked at his mom, and she said, no. <laughs> Sometimes we change our minds, don't we? Because we know what we should do, and then we know what we want to do, really, don't we? Sometimes we change our minds. But what Jesus is saying to us is the thing we do every Sunday. You know, we first turn and we face the baptismal font, and then what do we do? We turn and face the doors. Will y'all all turn and face the doors? Face the doors. And then we say, you are forgiven and free, and the cross walks in. And what do you do when the cross comes by? You bow your head, and you turn, and you face this way. So face this way. So we don't turn our back on everybody that's back there, but rather we focus just on Jesus. You see Jesus up there above the cross? Because Jesus is holding out his hand and he says, Come to me, all of you who want a new life. You have the right to change your mind. But I ask that you follow me, that you come and just follow me. So what I want you to do is stick your finger in the water, hot dog. Stick your finger, you can stick your finger in the water this time. Tell mom it's okay. All right, take your finger, and then I want you to make a cross right here on your forehead. Make a cross. And then sideways. And then sideways. So we make a cross on our forehead, and it reminds us that we come into this place that God loves us, and he wants us to be with him. He wants our heads to be wet, and he wants our feet to be wet as we walk around and tell about his love. Can you pray with me? God, we thank you for wet feet, for wet heads, and for a warm heart. Thank you this day, God, for bringing us here to this place. 
for a time to confess and to repent and to turn around and to follow you more closely. We thank you for loving us, and we pray this in Jesus' name. As God's children say, amen. amen. And you know what I say? Get on your mark, get set, go. <laughs> Will you pray with me the prayer of preparation? Holy God, you have a word for me today. Make my heart soft and plant your word in me in order that it may bear fruit in your kingdom. Amen. What day of the week is today? Sunday. So that means yesterday was Saturday. And the day before that was Friday. Yeah, it's a pattern. It happens all the time. I want you to tell me what was April the 2nd, 2023. April 2nd. It's been a long time, haven't it? hasn't it? That was Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. I had to look it up myself, 182 days, that's the part I didn't know, from today, was Palm Sunday. The reason that that is so important is today in this Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, it begins with the Palm story, triumphant entry of Jesus coming into Jerusalem. See, so many times we read these texts and we don't really know where they fall, right? Because it's not, no such thing as a chronological Bible that has everything in place. So sometimes we read these little pieces and we have to put into our heads the context of when it happened. So imagine this. So Jesus, remember what Palm Sunday's like? And every time I say Hosanna, you do something like this, you know? So... That happened. Jesus goes into the temple and they are selling sacrifices. And it's not the Walmart rollback rate, but rather some inflated rate. And Jesus gets so upset at the people in the temple that he turns over the tables and he lets the birds go and the goats roam and everything's in chaos. And then this story happens. You heard at the very beginning, it said Jesus entered the temple. So here's this story. But interestingly enough, right before this story is when Jesus curses the fig tree for not producing fruit. How many of you like figs? Me too. He's cursing the tree. Because it's not producing good fruit. How many of you like fig leaves? Me either. We all want the fruit, don't we? And then Jesus tells that story and then he tells this parable that we hear today. Don't you wish sometimes Jesus didn't speak in circles and just told you exactly what he was trying to get a point? across to you and to me. In this parable today, we've heard it many times, right? The truth of the matter is, neither of the sons said the truth and then followed through with it, did they? One son said, I will not go, and then he went. And the other one said, I won't go, and I won't go. And then the question said, which, Jesus asked them, which one of them lived out the Father's will? And they said, the first one. And the reason that first one is so important, it's verse 28, I think. Let me see, I think I highlighted in mine. It's verse 29. He said, he answered, I will not, I will not. But later the son changed his mind and went. We made fun of people changing their minds a little while ago. But how many of you have ever changed your mind? We all have, haven't we? We all knew that we dug in our heels for something and then later we realized, huh, 
That probably wasn't the right answer. How many of you have said something that you wish you could have sucked back in as soon as it left your teeth? I giggled that Joel puts the sign out there. You heard the arrow. Once you let go, you can't bring it back unless it's a boomerang. Right? So many times we say things and we do things and then... We remember the song we sang first this morning. They will know we are Christians by our love. Because love looks different, doesn't it? It looks like, as the Philippians read, it looks like changing for the sake of others. But mostly changing for the sake of the gospel. Wouldn't life be so much easier... Chandler, if the whole world just evolved around you, like everything you wanted, we just gave it to you. Wouldn't that be good? Yeah. It would be so exciting if we all live to please Chandler, except for when Adrian's around. Wouldn't it look like if we all gave everything we had to please him. Sorry, Adrian, you ain't Jesus. Wouldn't it be interesting if every decision we made in our lives, we followed that little bracelet that used to say, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus think? Sometimes I want to say, what would Jesus look at me like? You know, because you got that parent that can just look at you. And you straighten up. Could you imagine if Jesus just looked at I looked at us in our eyes and we knew we were supposed to do something else? Well, he actually does in the form of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit wraps around us. It works in us. What do you think made that first son change his mind from? He wanted to go to a football game and then he realized he didn't have a ticket. No, he he had an opportunity to reassess the choice that he made in life. Many times we make decisions after we've researched it and researched it and put it on the shelf and then researched it and researched it. How many of you over-research every single decision you make? I heard laughter. Sometimes we do that, don't we? And then we are so sure we have the right answer. And then you know what happens? We realize we were wrong. And that's what repentance looks like. God's calling us to change ourselves. Even if we made the wrong decision, we have the opportunity to change ourselves and that repentance. So I have a question for you. If a total stranger walked up to you on the street and asked you, why on 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings do you get up and go to church? What's your answer? Those of you who are live streaming, what is it about 9 o'clock on Sunday morning that you turn on the TV or your iPad or whatever? What is it? Why do you do what you do? I hope your answer is for the sake of him who gave his whole life and every breath for us for that would have been a great answer then if he would have just every single thing that you need he gave everything for you everything his very breath not just his outer garments but his inner garments and his belt And his breath, every single part of his being, he gave it for you.
I just told you earlier that two of our confirmation students completed their work for confirmation. Wait till you read their faith statements and what they believe. They have their little speech already written. But what is it that you believe? Because ultimately, Jesus says at the end, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of heaven ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. That's the last thing in the world we want to be victims of. We want to believe what Jesus said and share that love with everyone. They question Jesus' authority. Who gave you all this authority? And if you don't know the one who gave the authority, you can't understand the authority. Jesus says, I want you all. Individually, he told each of the disciples, come and follow me. At your baptism, Jesus says, come and follow me. Come here dry and ashy skin and all that stuff and let me dip you into this fountain of everlasting life. Let me change you forever. And may you continue to just get up and follow me. What that means, though, is we have to realize there's somebody bigger than us. Somebody with more authority than we have. So first thing we have to do is be humble. And in that humility, we lift him up. High above this altar. High above our own little plateaus that we have. So may we all follow Jesus because we know where his authority came from. No need to question that. The only thing we should question is our own repentance and our own ability and inability to continue to follow him. So let us follow because he has all the authority. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. We put our trust in you as we pray for the church. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and teachers the gifts of wisdom and discernment. God, we pray as bishops from all over the United States gather this week for their conference. Be with them in bold truth and faithful witness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Trusting your goodness, we pray for all caregivers and we pray for people who are sick or suffering in any way. We especially pray this day for Patricia Backman, Alberta Berry, Lavinia Butts, Bobby and Doris Carver, Eldon Ergel, James Hallman, Marie Cleckley, Gloria Mathias, Jean Sheely, Tom Roof, Cindy Thurman, Linda Waters Hamilton, and we pray this day for Pastor Darrell Edwards. We also ask God for your continual healing to touch Bonnie Baltnight, Chris Carroll, Easton Donaldson, Georgiana Gray, Robert Haygood, Dot Mathias, Jean Schofield, Jane Sexton, and Jim Whitaker. And God, we have more names to bring to you. So hear those names that we say out loud. Hear the names that we hold quietly in our hearts. Give them encouragement and consolation in your presence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Teach us your paths as we pray for this congregation. As we begin the celebration of our homecoming. Be at work in us and unite us in your love as we labor to together for the sake of the gospel. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints who died secure in the knowledge of salvation. Keep us fearless in our faith and certain of your resurrection. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our hearts. Trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let us share that peace with one another.
So after sharing the peace of Christ, we, we also stop so that we can give back to God. So however it is that you give back to, um, to God, whether you give online or if you give here, and whatever it is that you give back, let us give back to God. Because honestly, everything we have belongs to Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sinners, poor and needy, weak and wounded, sick and sore, Jesus ready stands to save you, full of pity, love, and power. Come ye thirsty, come and welcome God's free bounty glorified. True belief and true repentance, every grace that brings you nigh. I will rise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms And then the arms of my dear Savior Oh, they're all ten thousand charms Come ye and ruined by the fall. If you tarry until you're better, you will never come at all. I will rise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms. Oh, come. 
give thanks for these gifts and we pray together. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it's our duty and it's our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so it was in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took a cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ is died, Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Lord, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Jesus invites each of us to this table. So as we come through the center aisle and you receive your bread and wine, then just return back to, you, to your seats by the side aisles for just a time of prayer and meditation. So come and be fed.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. We pray together. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have tasted on your word. Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts, strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I receive this blessing. May the God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you all higher and higher. And he shall lift you all. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. the light of Christ into the world. We are God's people on a mission. We have gathered, we have been fed, and now we go out to make a difference in the world. <laughs> 